Hi, I'm Ryan Grantham, and uh, I'm playing the role of Redwood. He murdered his mother. He loaded his car with three guns, ammunition. 64-year-old Barbara Waits was playing piano in the Squamish townhome, where he used a 22 caliber rifle and fired one fatal shot to the back of her head. Riverdale actor did what? Okay, you guys, I was debating whether I should talk about this case or not because it's very disturbing. But this story has literally been haunting me for weeks and some things are just not adding up. Ryan Grantham, that innocent looking kid from the Diary of a Wimpy Kid and Riverdale, unalived his own mother by shooting her in the back of her head and he also planned to commit more heinous crimes before surrendering to the police. Seriously, what is going on with the former child stars? Because didn't Jeanette McCurdy just release a book called I'm Glad My Mom Died? Obviously, I'm not trying to draw a parallel between Jeanette and Ryan because Jeanette's mom died of cancer and we all know she put Jeanette through hell. As far as Ryan, we actually don't know what his mom was like and how she treated him, but still, I couldn't help but think of Jeanette and other troubled child stars when I heard what Ryan did. And I really think that we need to have a serious conversation about childhood fame because Ryan's case is just so bizarre and disturbing. And honestly, I have a gut feeling that there's more to the story than they're telling us. All the details they released about his motive are so vague and the sentence he received for this despicable crime? You're telling me he could be free before he turns 40? Y'all, there are so many unanswered questions about this case, and I'm gonna break it all down for you in this video, so let's jump right into it. I don't know if you guys know who Ryan Grantham is by name, but I'm sure you recognize his face. He is best known for his role as Rodney James in the movie Diary of a Wimpy Kid, as well as Jeffrey Augustine in the TV show Riverdale. You might also remember Ryan from his guest appearances on the hit show Supernatural and the coming of age movie Becoming Redwood. But then again, it doesn't really matter what show or movie you remember Ryan from because from now on, he will be only remembered as the actor who killed his own mom. But where did it all go wrong for Ryan to the point where he went psycho and did this to his mom? I mean, I can't imagine carrying a child and then they end up being the one who takes your life. And then also I can't help but wonder if something happened between Ryan and his mom in his childhood that led him to this. Of course, I'm not trying to excuse his crimes because what he did is literally the worst of the worst, but y'all, here's the thing. The bizarre part is that we don't really know much about Ryan's childhood or his relationship with his mother. And also the way that the media has been reporting on this case is really strange because it almost seems like there's part that's missing from the whole story. What we do know about Ryan's childhood is that he was born in 1998 to the late Barbara Waite and his father, whose identity is not known, in Squamish, British Columbia, Canada. He started acting when he was super young and attended schools that specialized in acting. According to his IMDb page, Ryan landed his first TV role when he was just nine years old. But that's pretty much all you'll find on the internet about Ryan's childhood. Ryan's last acting job was on season four of Riverdale, which aired in 2019. After that, he pretty much fell off the radar and most people forgot about him. But then, in June 2022, Ryan suddenly started making headlines again. However, this time, it was for all the wrong reasons. On June 13th, 2022, news broke that Ryan Grantham appeared in court for a sentencing hearing in the British Columbia Supreme Court. The charge? Second degree murder of his own mother, 64 year old Barbara Waite. Ryan pleaded guilty to taking his mom's life on March 31st, 2020, and he also told the court about other dark things he planned to do. Ryan apparently rehearsed everything in advance, and he even took videos of the crime on a GoPro camera showing his mom's body. In one of these videos, Ryan confessed to what he did to his mom, and it's disturbing. He snuck up on his mom as she was playing the piano and then shot her in the back of the head. He then covered her body with a sheet, placed lit candles around her, and hung a rosary from the piano. After he did this, Ryan went out to buy beer and pot and later went to bed like nothing happened. Now, when you hear something like this, the first thing you think is, why? Of course, a lot of people on social media started speculating that Ryan's mom was abusive and that he committed the crime because of some serious childhood trauma. 
But, like I already told you guys, there's literally no evidence that Ryan's mom ever mistreated him, which makes this case really bizarre. And then on top of that, it turned out that Ryan also planned to commit more crimes after. So during his sentencing hearing, parts of his diary were read in court, which describe Ryan's plans to assassinate Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. And then when Ryan was asked why he did what he did to his own mom, Ryan told the court he wanted to spare her from witnessing his future crimes. The court also heard how Ryan experienced feelings of self-loathing, hopelessness, and an urge to commit violence for months before he took his mom's life. And he also considered committing mass crimes at Simon Fraser University, where he was a student. Besides this, two psychiatric reports showed that Ryan had been going through an intense period of clinical depression in the months leading up to the crime. As for Ryan's defense, his lawyer, Chris Johnson, said that the court should take into account Ryan's mental illness and the fact that he feels remorse about the crime. Johnson said Ryan didn't commit the crime because he hated his mom or had some kind of animosity towards her, but that his disordered thinking made him believe that he was protecting his mom from seeing what he thought he was about to do. And according to court records, Ryan was also worried his mom would find out about his bad grades and pot smoking. Though, honestly, I don't understand why they even mentioned this last part because what kid doesn't worry about stuff like this and yet they don't decide that the solution is to put a bullet in their mom's head. Obviously, Ryan had much, much deeper issues than his grades or smoking. Anyways, here's what Ryan did next. The day after he brutally took his mom's life, Ryan loaded his car up with three guns, ammunition, 12 Molotov cocktails, camping supplies, and a map with directions to the house where Prime Minister Trudeau lives with his wife and three children. However, as he approached the small town of Hope in British Columbia, he suddenly changed his mind and headed to Vancouver to turn himself in. That same day, Ryan's sister, Lisa Grantham, found their mother's body after she became concerned that neither her mother nor brother were answering their phones. In her victim impact statement, Lisa said her life and career have been completely destroyed by Ryan's heinous crime. And you guys, she also revealed that her mom was battling cancer and that she was her best friend, which makes this whole story even more heartbreaking. She was vulnerable and Ryan gave her no chance to defend herself, Lisa said. It pains me to know he was a danger to her life. Lisa also told the court that there is no doubt in her mind that her brother is a very dangerous person and that she is terrified that he might be released from prison. However, Ryan said in his statement to the court that he's made a lot of progress after going through counseling during the past 25 months of his incarceration and added, someday if I'm ever released from prison, I hope to continue on this path of bettering myself. And here's where we get to another bizarre part of the story. Okay, so it turns out Lisa was right to mention the scary possibility of Ryan being released from prison because that's exactly what could happen. On September 23rd, 2022, Ryan was sentenced to life in prison, but he will be eligible for parole in just 14 years. A BC Supreme Court judge called this case disturbing, heartbreaking, and extremely tragic. She says she wanted to strike a balance by recognizing the gravity of this crime without extinguishing any hope of rehabilitation. Ryan Grantham was given a life sentence with no chance of parole for 14 years. By the way, can some of y'all please explain to me how this is a second degree and not first degree charge when he literally admitted he planned the crime in advance? And then what also doesn't sit right with me is how Ryan's lawyer said he's worried about something happening to Ryan in prison because of his age and size. I get where he's coming from, but doesn't this sound a little privileged to you? Should I also mention how the media keeps using photos of him when he was a kid and we know they don't do that for people of color accused of these kind of crimes. This situation is just so disturbing for everyone involved and like I said, I feel like there's more to his story than meets the eye. And y'all, I am not the only one. A lot of people have been paying attention to how social media reacted to this case and there are actually a lot of people out there who are convinced we are not being told all the details. One comment said, I understand why everyone is judging him, but I'm more curious as to why they aren't releasing any details for his motive for doing this. It's no secret 
that child actors are often subjected to things no parent would want their child being exposed to. Maybe there was some trauma related to that he just couldn't shake off. Another person said, has anyone done any research into why so many former child stars seem to have problems later in life? Looks like a needed study for an academic department of psychology. If we could identify a cause, perhaps steps could be taken to mitigate it. And honestly, I agree with this last person because I feel like there are so many child stars whose lives have been ruined and toxic parents are still trying to force their kids into the entertainment business. Of course, we should be careful not to accuse Ryan's poor mom of anything without any evidence. And if you ask me, Ryan deserves to spend his life under lock and key for what he did to her. However, as society, we really need to have a serious conversation about the dangers of childhood fame, cause it's not just the parents we need to worry about. We all know the entertainment industry can be a very dark place full of creeps. Anyways, you guys, I really, really want to know what you think about this Ryan Grantham case, so please leave your comments down below, and I'll see y'all next time.